Hello everyone. In this video, we will be going over how to get the Elastorobo worksheet or column using C Sharp in the Excel Interop library. To demonstrate this, we will be using this workbook as an example. This workbook contains 13 rows of data, which include various people's names and their ages. You might be wondering why we would need to write code to do this, and we can easily see what the last row is. The answer is that this type of functionality would be useful if you have to work with varying sets of data in which you don't know ahead of time how many rows it contains. Going back to our project, our code currently will open up this workbook. If you have any questions about how to set up this project, please refer to the first link in the description. Let's start by creating a static function that will return the last used row. Let's type public static int get last row worksheet ws. In the body of the function, let's type return worksheet.cells.find. To explain a little more, we are going to use the find function that will return the row number of the last row that contains data. As we can see, it takes in many parameters. However, we don't need to specify all of these parameters. The first one that we do need is the first parameter, object what. We will pass in an asterisk. The asterisk is a special character that indicates we want to find the last row that contains any data. Next, we will specify that we want to pass in a value for the parameter search order, which is Excel search order dot Excel by rows. Then, we want to specify a value for the parameter search direction, which is Excel search direction dot Excel previous, followed by dot row. We now have a function that will return the last row that contains data. If you were to look online, there's a few different ways to go about finding the last row data in a worksheet. The reason why I have chosen to do it this way is because it is the most reliable. There are other methods of finding the last row that will work some of the time, but may also be inaccurate. The reason they are sometimes inaccurate is because they may return a higher row number due to rows that used to have data but have since had that data deleted. I have found this way of finding the last row to be the most consistent. Let's test this function by calling it above. Let's type int last row equals get last row worksheet. Let's print it out with console.writeline last row. And lastly, we'll stop the console window from closing with console.readline. Let's run our code. We can see the value of the console window is 13, which aligns with the last row of data in our workbook. So now we have confirmed that this function is working correctly. This works well when all of our columns of data have the same amount of rows, but what if we were to work with a data set in which they didn't all end on the same row? This function would still return the last used row, but what if we wanted the last row of a specific column? Let's say in our case, we were to delete Nina's age. Now, the last row that column B uses would be 12. To solve this, let's write another function that can find the last row of a specific column. Let's go back to our code. To create this function, let's scroll back down here. Let's start by typing public static int get last row in column worksheet ws string column. Next, let's type for int x equal get last row worksheet x greater than zero x minus minus. In the body of this for loop, let's type if quotes plus worksheet dot range column plus x dot value does not equal empty quotes, then return x. Let's make sense of what we just wrote. This x variable within this for loop is initialized to the last row of the worksheet. Then it will decrement back down to zero, and while it's decrementing, it will check to see if each cell within that column is empty. And if it is not empty, then we know that whatever row we land on will be the last used row within that particular column. And we will then return that row number. We are still seeing an error because we haven't defined what should happen in case we were to complete this loop without returning a value. For this case, let's type return zero. We return zero to indicate to our program that there were no used rows anywhere in this column. We use zero specifically because Excel doesn't have a row zero, which means we will never return zero if there's any data in that column. I would recommend that when calling this function, you write code to handle for when this function returns zero. Because otherwise, if you try to use the return value of zero as a row number, it could cause a runtime error. Let's test this function by calling it above. 
instead of calling get last row, let's change it to get last row and column. And let's pass column B to our second parameter. Let's run our code. The console window is displaying 12, which matches up with the last row and column B. Now that we have these two functions, we have to decide where to store them. Ideally, it would be nice if these two functions were already a part of the worksheet class. And although we can't go back and modify the source code of the worksheet class, what we can do is simulate as if they were. We can accomplish this using extension methods. For those who are not familiar, extension methods allow us to extend the functionality of an already existing class. To do this, I have created another class over here called extensionmethods.cs. If you haven't already, go ahead and create this class. Once you've created it, go ahead and cut these two functions and paste them into the extension methods class. Also, make sure that the extension methods class is public and static. To transform these functions into extension methods, all we have to do is add the this keyword before the worksheet parameter. This signals that this function can be used as if it was already a part of the worksheet class. Going back to our main function, instead of passing in the worksheet object, we can call it this way. Let's run our code one last time to verify everything still works. As expected, we are still returning 12 as the last row of column B, which means everything is working the way it's supposed to. That's all for this video. If you found this video helpful and want to see more tutorials like these, please like and subscribe to the channel. Also, if there are any topics I haven't covered, feel free to suggest them in the comments, and I may make a video about them in the future. Thanks for watching.